Hello, I'm Galita, and welcome to my Friday fun connection, talking about things. So today we're talking about if we're worried about the world, and I would like to share why I'm optimistic about the world. And it's uh, not because I'm ignorant, um, but because um, I'm invest investigating uh, where are we going. I'm investigating the trends of consciousness since 1998. So I think that it is has to do with the sense of awakening. So a lot of us are now awakening to the truth of reality. A lot of us are awakening to the truth of ourselves, of the truth of humanity, the light side and the dark side. Um, and that can be a bit scary because we are thinking something is happening to our world, and something's happening to the earth, something's happening to us. Uh, what it's going to be, we don't know. So it creates fear and worry. But if you look into it, it's interesting. So I would like to share that with you. Is that okay? I hope you can um, uh, enjoy it and share your own view about things. Um, I also notice that I trigger sometimes people when I'm when I'm saying that I um, that I believe in fascinating and exciting outcome to some things. Um, but it's also because many of us uh, carry the pain body in ourselves and in our family line uh, and traumas from the collective of what humanity experienced that we think, oh, it's happening again. We cannot see that this time we are actually jumping, upgrading to a new era. So I'll start from the beginning. So we'll start with trends of the uh, of where we are. So as you can see, we are in a shakedown kind of period. And it will continue for a few years because there's no way of going back. We are going forward. There's a lot of movements. This is the evolution of our whole world. Uh, it's in the stars, it's in the earth, it's in the molecules, it is in our DNA, it is in our uh, elements. Everything is evolving. That's the nature of life. It's expanding. And when something is getting upgraded, the old has to go. You make a new kitchen, the old kitchen goes, it's a mess. And then you can create the new kitchen that you want that fits to where you are and the way you work. And uh, so humanity going through this now. And it can be a bit shocking if you didn't notice those things before. Um, so so I would like to share. So if you if we look at the things that are disturbing us the most now, uh, it's the earth changes, which is one big subject. And the other one is the humanity consciousness. Um, so we can see the life that we had until now, the structures that we have built, and how things don't fit. So I want to say really, really very important. It is a period, and it started already, you know, it's, it's always an evolution. So things, something started in the 60s and evolving in the 80s and something happened in the 90s and then in 2000 and 2012. It's all kind of upgrading and everything goes a bit faster and looks a bit faster and feels a bit faster. Um, and um, now I forgot what I wanted to say. Okay, so, so actually what we are seeing is the, the rotten tooth. We see the rotten, smelly tooth that is coming out of our mouth, literally, sometimes. Uh, and we also, at the same time, uh, if we look at it, we can see the new healthy tooth that is coming out. So we are in the middle of growing and letting go of rotten tooth and growing new tooth. And if you're only looking at the rotten tooth, you can get depressed. So... You have to balance it out. You have to understand, oh, I'm, I'm looking at the dinosaur parts that is falling apart, um, and or I'm looking at what's coming. So I want to say a really to a list of why, I, um, why I'm optimistic. I even wrote it down in case I will forget. Okay, so um, one of the things that's disturbing for most of us is realizing uh, um, seeing those shadow forces uh, intervening in our life, jeopardizing. So when we are waking up to our own power and consciousness, we start to see the stuff that is a bit spooky. We can see that there is manipulation on humans. There is manipulation on our economy. We see, we can see that our water is manipulated. We see that the medicine that we get is 
you know, you know we, we see the very ugly side of life. So now we are in a time where we can see everything. And it can be so frustrating. Uh, we see also on a global scale how rotten uh, leaders and fake leaders are everywhere. Uh, and power. There is a lot of mm, corrupt money, and those people who are in power are not working for the people. So we can see that. But it doesn't mean that this is our future. If I'll tell you what I see in the future, you will be delighted. And I'm going to share that with you because I thought that everyone can see what I see. But, uh, but no, some of us can see and some of us not even looking. So the shakedown that is happening now in every country, and of course we, we know about very famous president that his job was to illuminate the ugliness and the stupidity of the force of our own ego and our own third dimension uh, thing, uh, uh, persistence uh, and reality. And, and, and it is hard to watch. It is even harder to watch because we see that there are consequences. We can see the suffering and we can see uh, the unfairness and it makes us be upset. Um, but you have to have it in balance. Be in order for us to have, a, as I said, renovated new beautiful house, we have to look at the cracks and the rotten and the, and the fungies and our shower and to go like, oh, we need to renovate here. We have to re-clear re and re recreate and rebuild. Um, so looking at the rotten stuff is not pleasant, but it's the only way to acknowledge what there is in order for us to change. Now, the only reason you will be worried or afraid, uh, like, like I am sometimes, uh, is that we are being, being really afraid that, oh, it's happening again, because we have all memories from other times where light forces or we or other people try to bring the light of liberation and freedom to people and they were crushed because it happens so much in our history. But there is the point where you have to zoom out from our, you know, 2020 or the life we live in to zoom out. Um, and if you, if you are here and listening to me, uh, give me a sign or, or tell me what you think. I would like to have a discussion about that. But sometimes we have to zoom out really further and to look at the big cycles of things to understand where we are. So if we go really, really far. If we go in, into the cycles where uh, um, science now explained to us through examining the earth, all the layers of the earth, what happened on the earth the last millions of years, we can see in the biggest, biggest, biggest scale, which is written about in the Kabbalah and written about uh, by the Aboriginal and written about by uh, Native Americans' uh, understanding of the universe. And it's written in the Hindu understanding of how the world was created. All of this mythology is talking about the biggest, biggest picture. And the biggest, biggest picture is that the light source wanted to experience its, itself on, on all levels. And we are in a cycle, the huge, the biggest cycle of life is that there is a cycle of descension that we are taking the ultimate life and it breaks itself into little pieces and then we're coming into the lowest form of existence, of consciousness, almost in the darkness, which is the opposite side of the creator. And that's the experience, that's duality. And then we are in a cycle going to um, um, ascension. So we, in the cycle of life, in any way you look at it, through the mystical eyes or through the scientist eyes, we are on the cycle going up in uh, ascension. So this is already should show you that we are now going to experience the fulfillment of ourselves until we reach back into the oneness of light. And that will take thousands of years. But we are on a move, moving up. And if you are a person a seeker like, like me and other people and you go and experience yourself in other timeline and other uh, existence, we remember the time of dissension where, you know, it was an age of enlightenment and then it started to become dark and go down until <laughs> the Middle Ages, until... 
total darkness, ignorance, humans completely forgot who they are, literally almost going back to be uh, like an ape. And then we go up again. And the Native Americans of, um, of uh, cultures are talking about that the world is always in a cycle. So when we will come into ascension and we get back into the oneness, the Hindus say then the Brahma is resting, and then we, he, when he feels to play again with life, he would go through another cycle of descent into the smallest form of the opposite of the light and go up again. So is this too crazy to tell the biggest cycles in order to see where we are? We are in ascension. So even if we go step forward and step back, we are still going up. We still have millions of years of enjoying, exploring, of uniting with the light, of expanding human consciousness. And your eternal soul is a player in playing all of itself. So there is a total uh, experience of becoming a lighter and higher being. So you are going back to the oneness yourself. Uh, so your own evolution is always uh, to become just better than what you were before and to experience fullness of joy and, and what unconditional love is and what the opposite is. Um, and that's the game of life. So we are now in a time where we are upgrading. Everything's been upgraded and it's not us alone. It's our whole universe that is being upgraded. So I find that one of the most important things to do in this time is to expand your consciousness because staying on a lower frequency when part of us is going to a higher frequency is a bit sad uh, and it's not fun uh, because lower frequency is a bit more dark, is a bit more, more disease and it's more suffering and we want to go up. So we are already going up. Some people will decide to stay in the same old, same old uh, tribal survival, um, and and that's a choice, and every choice is is honored. But the best thing what you can do for yourself, for your family, for the world, is to awaken yourself that you want to raise your consciousness into the next steps of your own brilliant part, which of course you already have in you. You don't have to learn it; you just have to remember it. Uh, and open yourself to it and let go of the resentment and all of these programs that keeping you small and um, powerless and open yourself up to the light and to who you are and evolve. And you don't even have to be belong to any religion to do that because that's part of the freedom is that we start to remember ourselves not in a dogmatic form of a religion which was using. Um, some of the great uh, knowledge inside its uh, um, structures in order to give you what you need but keep you in check. And now we don't need to be kept in check. And that's the exciting part. So I'm going to start to tell you what I see in the future of humanity and why it's such a worthwhile journey to be on. So anybody here, please give me something that I know you're here. Um, okay, so where are we going? That's very exciting where we're going. And that's worthwhile talk about more than where we were. But we will go back and forth. So where we were was a time of humans don't know who they are, forgot who we are. And we had, and we still have, a lot of programs that keeping us in, in um, not full potential. Uh, and we can talk about that, who's doing that, what is this, that process, all this philosophy, it doesn't matter. We live in duality and we have those two forces. But you become aware about when you are jeopardizing your own self or when you are adopting something in your society that is uh, uh, limiting you and your free thinking and your free um, genius. Um, and that's your work. That's the only thing that you need to do. You need to be in tune uh, to understand that it's your obligation, your duty, but your right to find your own voice, your own connection to your own inner voice and higher self and to connect to your own self so you can bring, thank you, somebody understood what I'm saying. Woo! 
um, um, so we can so you can bring yourself forward and when you do that you help all of us to take humanity from survival from fear from enormous pain and enormous traumas that keep repeating if you will just look on one page of uh, of human history from the 20th century just go to spain what happened there in the war it's it's freakingly scary and now we are moving into a part where a lot of us are working these things out in order to liberate our family from our own collective trauma from our own family trauma genetic trauma, historical trauma all of those things so it's a very interesting time on one hand we see still a part of the world live in poverty when there is so much money around so many amazing resources so many things that can liberate all of us but we are still in there there are forces keeping economy like this education like this uh expression of freedom uh all of those things this is the world where we are coming from and in some places we are very strongly into it but little bit by little bit we are already moving into the new one and how can you see the new the new is fear versus love they starting to understand uh, that survival, that's not the only way of living. So there are some evolutions that are taking us into understand that we have amazing power in our brain and how brilliant the human is and how magnificent the, the human soul is and how elevated it is in comparison to any other life form, uh, how generous the earth is and that the earth herself cannot anymore live in this dimension and as we are already reached the tip points that's what happened in 12, 12, 2012 that was like famous what happened is that humanity reached the tipping point of having a collective intention we don't want to stay in there we want to explore who we are more people want to live in peace more people actually want to to honor every human this idea that humans are fighting each other because they're beastie animals this is a wrong and shadow program humans by essence and, and, and science can can support this are loving and caring needing community and very fast triggered to feel compassion to the other everything else is a programs and programs of fear and survival and overload of trauma so any work that you will do to bring your own your own inspiration into your body you know some some of us are not even living in our body because there's so much pain and trauma in there but you can change everything especially now as we move fast and faster into into our our next chapter you don't have to talk to a psychologist for 14 years on the couch every week about what your mother did to you this age is finished it was necessary in order for us to start to understand ourselves but some of the principle of understanding a human soul is a is a language now we don't need a, a psychologist to tell us how we are uh, how my mother triggered me by say that and what it, your consciousness is expanding your understanding ourselves and our own spirit is available you can go to youtube and you can have amazing teachers and amazing uh, sounds and meditations that takes you to your core you can take all of the study that you understand you need to understand how your brain works and how your mechanism works and 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 decide which programs of fear and resentment and and, and paralyzing pain and and guilt and shame and all of those things if you can release those and choose and you can write your own book you create your own reality you we are creating our own reality okay i have to, to go back to why i'm optimistic so if you look at the new truth that is being born in our world it is magnificent if you have children if you know children you can see that the generations every generations after us is already bringing codes and knowledge that didn't exist on the earth for thousands of thousands of years they can see truth <laughs> already and they have um uh understanding that our older politician doesn't don't get yet they still think in hierarchy 
which the new generation doesn't. They still think we are the little controlling the masses, but there is amazing movement. And you can see that in any country that you, that you are looking to in the news, there is a movement of power to the people. Now, the reason why you will think that it doesn't, it will not gonna work again, it's because we have this memory of the times that it felt. And for some of us, it's literally personal, we feel it. But there is amazing movement in every nation, every tribe, that the power of the people is actually bigger than those uh, elite that's sitting. And I'm not talking again against people, I'm talking about this energy of uh, everybody are slave to the few. You know, this old, uh, this old industrial uh, era kind of thinking. This is ending. So, and how we can see that? We can see that in everywhere. We can see that the issues that we have with the earth, and let's not go into fear there, the, the, the issues that's happening on the earth have to happen have to happen because the earth herself has to reconfigure herself. Our consciousness is reconfiguring itself and we are related. We are coming into understanding that we should work together with the earth. And in Western civilization, we adopted this thinking that nature is the enemy and we have to control it. Uh, we are coming out of it. We started to understand that the philosophies of the East never lost this connection to understand cosmos, human and earth. And we are starting to see, oh, the earth <laughs> is a sentient being. She has her own evolution and she starts to clean herself. And it is alarming to see how many floods are, are happening and coming and there's a change in weather. I was talking to my mother uh, not long time ago and today. <laughs> and the floods and the floods in Spain and in the desert it's kind of unexpected. There are fires and volcanoes, and this is going to continue to happen, and you should not be in fear. You should just understand that it will force humanity to go to the next step of understanding that country borders are the old way. We have to stick together in order to overcome the, the changes. Um, so my husband is an engineer, and he's working on something saying basically that engineers have to do back to do solving problems that have to do with the, with the earth and some of the things that they are doing is fascinating for us regular people who don't know to know how much innovation there is how many amazing ideas how many solutions there are the other side of the technical aspects of how we're solving earth problems and social problems and political problems is understanding that uh, my husband and I are actually the opposite. Like he's the person, like the masculine part will be taking care of the outer, how it looks, how it's been done, how the material part. But my interest and the other part of it is understanding that we have to adopt our psychology and we have to help people ourselves, not to go into the paralyzing fear and the feeling of powerlessness, but to move into understanding, okay, there is also an opportunity here. There's opportunity here to move from the earth changes, take us into another level of cooperation and collaboration between each other. Not only us, humanity and the earth, but also humans between ourselves. There's gonna, there are going to be changes. There are going to be some shocking changes though, of islands that, that maybe are disappearing. But there's going to be a new land that's coming up. The, the, the earth, it, will take, it will take time. So it's not an uh, apocalyptic uh, um, event. Uh, this idea that we have to be afraid of this Armageddon thing, it's also one of those programs that makes us afraid of our own power. The truth is it will be gradual, it will be inconvenient, but we will have to help each other. If an island in, in, in Greece is going to be in trouble, people in Sweden and people in Canada also want to help. And so humans, you and me, have to start to understand we have to take care of the hard hardware of our planet and society, but also the software, and the software is how we are talking with each other, how we're dealing with emotions, how we're dealing with fear, how we're dealing with um, uh, other, other, other things that we need in order to be empowered. Oh, thank you, Virginia. I'm so excited to, to get the response from you here. Um, yes, yeah, exactly. In Australia, 
it, it is it is hard and we are praying and we're sending money and we do everything we can at the same time we also have to 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 help ourselves and the world to look at it in a new way in renewal in in breaking old molds and understanding that the earth is wise and magnificent and she knows how to upgrade and there's all this love you know, people who work as shamans like me can connect you to the love that the earth has for us. Uh, but your, uh, your job is to bring yourself into love and confidence uh, and releasing fear and resentment that you have in yourself, to the earth, to life, in anything. So I was talking about why I'm optimistic, because we can see the collapse of the old and the politics and we can see the dark controlling energies trying to keep this separation between people. Uh, but that's not where we're going. This is just the resistance of it not to change. What really happens, and this is also what I find fascinating, um, I investigate in different ways, in different sources from different countries and different mediums. And if I look into politics things, what happened lately? What happened lately is that some forces tried to, to create a war between America and Iran in order for the same forces to have the money, to have the control, to have all of these things. We know. But it didn't work. And one of the reasons why it didn't work, it's because people, and I hear that a lot, I, I see American people feeling sorry for the Russian people who are stuck with their government and Russian people feeling bad for what their forces are doing to America. And, and, and we don't talk politics here. And suddenly the people start to see, we don't want to have, we don't have argument with the people of Iran, the opposite, we understand them. They start to become, there is, there, there is an undercurrent of people start to see people that are supposed to be enemy and to start to see fathers and mothers in Iran, in uh, Venezuela, in America, in Britain, in India, wherever we are, that we start to see ourselves as ourselves, as fathers and mothers that just want to give safety and opportunity for their children. The human is a beautiful, peace-loving creature. But when it's sick, it will do stuff. And um, we are becoming aware about it. So now we're starting to realize, oh, there are forces trying to make me so afraid that I will well want to have a war with this country. It worked 20 years ago. And this war is still going on, but we are awakening. And this awakening is so powerful because there are so many great people and every person that opens his heart, that starts to feel compassion to itself or to the children of group of people that they used to consider as enemy we are shifting the paradigm of our world and it is taking momentum and you can see that with the rise of the feminine and when i'm talking a feminine it's not even only the rise of women it's the rise of the feminine is the element of the yin and the yang i'm talking about it for 20 years but now you can see it everywhere you can see the rise of the feminine some of the amazing leaders that are coming up in the world and you're going to see more of that even the men and the women, you can see the feminine side, the part that is has wisdom and compassion and ability to manifest new reality is growing. And that's another reason to feel that we will start to match up our knowledge with wisdom. We've started to match what we can do outside in the world with what we can do inside in the world and to start to understand how much power we have in our, um, our brain and in our heart and in our voice and in our body, which I'm talking a lot about that. And inner world peace, if you know, uh, is something that you can join, download the things and join us in this connecting to this field. Okay, am I talking too long? Somebody tell me if I'm talking too long, but I'm very passionate about it. But there are more. There is, if you look at evidence, and you should, because when you look at evidence of something, you will change your belief. And if your belief saying, we are doomed, the world is going to go in bust, the future includes two things that are new. And we can see the movement of it. It includes more technology, 
but includes also more connection to the earth, which is very interesting. So I'll tell you what I see when I look in the, in the future. Um, um, I think the jumps in technology that is coming is just amazing. Of course, we have to be uh, wise and to demand as the people that it's been done with integrity and with new understanding about how we are managing data and who are those forces who are holding the things. We have to start to take things into our hands, which we do. And it will be gradual, but we are already doing it with our understanding. Um, but in the, I, the way that I see people in the future, we live close to nature. We live close to nature. Uh, so we think that the world become more and more urban, but it's not true. The world is going to become more inhabitable by, by being connected to the earth as it is in its new, in its new version. But we will have technology that we can transport ourselves into places, we are, can connect to people, like we do in the internet, just like 10 times more. The, the ability of the humans to connect and manifest reality and creation just with the power of their heart and the mind, that's something we just now start to discover. It's going to be magnificent. And, and people are going to live underwater and live in the air really people will choose in which way they want to live they're going to choose an element they want to live they want to live underwater they want to the the versatility of how we're going to live and how much we're going to travel on this earth and outside of this earth i know it's shocking but i can see the great great children for them it will look like when our grandparents discovered that there is a radio that is transmitting the voice of somebody far away. What? How that works? I don't know how it works, but the, the, this technology is even, most of it is already on the planet. There's going to be innovation and a push for things that we cannot even imagine at the moment. And it comes from human ingenuity because the human is by definition a genius. The fact that we are uh, using our capacity on such a small degree, it's because that's how it was set. But this is changing. We are now taking charge of ourselves, and every person that starts to understand this or hear what I'm saying, and even if they don't care for it, understand it, it comes in a collective. You know, you know the test of the monkeys. There was a very famous um, um, scientific. Uh, uh, research that they did on monkeys on some island. So one of the things that came out is that they start to understand that there is a collective field because one of the things that happened in that test is that in, in one island, um, monkeys were getting um, fruit that they could not open. Um, um, it was, it was a, something new to them that they didn't know. But the moment that uh, they find out how to break that fruit and to take the goodness of it, that knowledge that that monkey had in that island, that knowledge they could see on other parts of the world that the monkeys in that field, even if they didn't see each other, they didn't know that there was another island or other monkeys on other island, the monkeys got the same knowledge. Somebody cracked the fruit in this way here. And the knowledge of how to crack this fruit was available in the collective. So this, how fluid the upgrade that we are going to have. We're going to find that our brain and our body and ourselves and our heart magnetic field can do so much more than we even realized. And some of the symptoms that's happening to our world and to ourselves, a lot of us have experiencing headaches and 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 changes in the body some a lot of people getting sick with something that looks very serious but then they come out of it also really fast there is kind of a reconfiguration of the human dna i'm not expert on that but you can learn that from people we can also measure the collective the collective um energy on the planet with a schumann resonance so now you start to see oh we are all connected into some kind of field so if more of us are feeling that we are choosing for more love 
more cooperation, uh, more working with each other, more forgiving, more realizing that in order for us to um, go to the next chapter, we have to think beyond the country and the tribe and our religion and to look at ourselves as one humanity. You know, the, the fires in Australia are not in, only in Australia. They're affecting all of us. And a lot of us are crying for the people and the animals that are suffering because we are one organism. So this awakening, there is a massive awakening happening. People realizing what is the world that we want. We're looking at what we have on the old world and we're choosing consciously or unconsciously to the new way. So that's why I'm optimistic about the future because humans are just amazing and we already chose for love and not for fear. So, is there something I want to say? I hope, oh, well, there's more thing I see about the future that is just amazing. Um, um, okay, we know, of course, that the educational system will change. I have, a, I have a son who's in, he's 15, going to school, going to high school. You know, the world of education have to change, have to catch up with our children. So all of those, um, all of those um, institutions that don't work for humanity anymore, uh, they are going to break down because this is the nature of life. Uh, so banks and having money done in this way. And when you look at the new economy and the people who come with initiative, build on cooperation, build on justice, build on innovation and smartness, you can see that the future is basic income. I, when I heard about basic income for every individual, I thought, how crazy. But first, there's so much money in the world. It's just, it just not, it's just not being done in a way that empowers humanity. And now there's even evidence that when people get basic income and they go out of the struggle to survive, they don't stop working. The opposite, they're looking for what they really want is to contribute. So it's not about how many hours you're going to work. That's also going to be taken out. What is this eight hours work day? That belongs to the thinking of factory workers need to produce. We moved now from this industrial age and we moving to knowledge age and a knowledge that is not about time you can earn money online just because you made a beautiful drawing and you put it on a t-shirt and 300 people love your t-shirt and it's not about how long you worked it's a new reality there is also a shift of people leaving their corporate work and moving into other way of income so there is a big shift economically so the old is falling it has to fall and we are going to do it gracefully hopefully if we are swimming and using our power of intention to do everything gradually and with love and not with fear the other things that are changing is agriculture people want to live in communities yes this is a human need in order to be happy i'm investigating happiness connection is number one this whole reality of living alone and take my own my privacy in my little house in my little kitchen is giving you privacy but it's miserable humans like to connect they like to do things together have their privacy have their freedom but also to be in a human connection and yeah, so I, I, I see that people are going to live in a way with each other, but also I, I grew up in a village that had a, a, a way of living that I think this is the best way of living. So it, it was, it was you know, so if you know, there is a concept called kibbutz, which is people live together and that doesn't exist anymore this way. Um, live together, work together, grow and raise their children together, everything together. That's wonderful. And that's wonderful if society is in terrible need and people come together so they create a foundation for survival that is much bigger. But I grew up in a village where every household had a little farm. So we grow our things, we grew our chicken, we had our goats, we had our milk, we had our um, fruit and vegetables. Wonderful way to grow up. 
but the village itself had some things together. And some of those things together were the, the culture and some fruit trees, so there are some shared money, and everybody had their own privacy, their own life, their own expansion, but there was some, some responsibility and shared things together. And I think humans are going to create those well, we're already eco villages where where technology is taking most of the work. Uh, you know, they already know that in the near future, 40% of, of jobs can be done by robots. But it doesn't mean you have to be afraid of what about it means that you have to liberate people to start to explore their creativity and that they can take their own personal, uh, brilliant, unique thing into our world so we can elevate. Oh my God, I'm talking for so long. I'm sorry. I feel so passionate about this because I don't like that people lose power by thinking that there is no future or that the world is scary. There's going to be changes. There are changes, but the future is bright, baby. It's beautiful. It's also beautiful for you, the opportunity for you to bring your own uniqueness into the world and your own soul mission that you can do. It's just like, wow, to live with, with purpose, to live with togetherness, to live with creativity, and the world is open, we'll be able to travel in a way that it is so expanding and nature is so gorgeous and the earth is so amazing. What is she evolving into? She's going to clean herself. There are so many amazing methods. As I say, some of the projects that I hear from my engineering husband, I go, humans are amazing. We are going to clean the seas. We are going to do, we are going to do so many so many exciting things. And why do you think there are so many people on the planet? So many souls want to experience this time. And then in a few years, there's going to be less people on this planet. The future is bright. And the future is innovation and more love and less survival and less um, um, suffering. And this is why it's worthwhile to stick and do your job Take time to rejuvenate yourself and to do the daily practice things to stay in health, in mindfulness, in high frequency. And you will see. So this is why I'm optimistic about uh, the world. And every time that I see something collapse, I honor it. You know, this person can leave. We're going to see some changes in some governments. This year is a really big year. Hold tight, take care of your body, say loving words to yourself and to your family, and realize how much power you have in your words in your in your mind. And I am going to say goodbye now. Um, yes. Let me see if there's something else I need to say. Just that I feel a lot of love, really, to all of humanity and to all of the animals and to all of the vegetation and the trees and the stones. There's just so much love. If you can just tap into this love and let yourself be filled up like a, like a battery with this very high, high frequency, unconditional love that come from cosmos, that come from earth, that come from creation, and just feed yourself, then you help us move faster and more graceful into our new, new chapter. So thank you so much for listening until now and goodbye. Can you hear it soon, I would say.